So as you said, everybody is uh, muted, uh, but you can unmute yourself if you have uh, time for a question. You can put that in the group chat or you can just keep it until the end for the last 15 minutes or so. And uh, we'll go from there. But I think um, rather than waste too much more time of being inside when you can um, still see a beautiful little sunshine, I might be able to get the best of the late afternoon sunshine in there. I might just uh, get going. Amanda will be our main uh, presenter today um, and we'll pass on over. So without further ado, let's get started. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself, you can say what you think and challenge everything. No question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith and meaning. You're very welcome. My name is Amanda O'Shea and I am the National Coordinator for Alpha Youth as well as Head of Development. So I just work on partnerships and uh, meeting lots of people and having lots of cups of coffee. I really enjoy what I do. Uh, this team is fabulous. Before we get started, I just want to pray with you all. That's okay. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for this Easter weekend, remembering all that you've done for us. We thank you for giving your life for us. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you were raised again to life so that we can also be raised to new life. Guide us now. Help us to have your heart for our communities. In Jesus' holy name, amen. So you're very welcome. Uh, we're very excited about this. This is our first Alpha Online webinar. Um, what you can expect from this webinar is how to prepare, how to begin, and hospitality. In the next few weeks, uh, so next Monday at the same time at three o'clock, we're gonna talk a little bit about sharing the video and how to do small groups uh, with the breakout rooms. And then on week three, we're gonna show you how in the world do you do a Holy Spirit retreat 
online. So this is brand new ground for all of us. We're super excited to share what we've learned in a very short time about how to get Alpha online. I'm sure all of you are already trying to figure out how to use Zoom just as you try and connect with your family, uh, with your friends. Um, and Zoom is a way that uh, we would recommend that you try to run Alpha online. But first, let's do uh, an icebreaker. So as part of our welcome, uh, hospitality doesn't get thrown out the window, even with Alpha Online. Uh, John would have sent you a welcome email. Hopefully you've prepared your favorite snack. I have here uh, an orange, and this might look a little strange. This is a, um, it's actually called a resurrection roll that I looked up as a craft to do with my children this weekend. And they had to take a marshmallow and roll it just like Jesus was rolled up into the tomb. <laughs> uh, and, and yes, um, the marshmallow explodes out one end just as Jesus exploded to life, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, a little loose theology going on there, but yeah. So hopefully you have your favorite snack and your favorite drink. I have water just to keep me refreshed as I talk to you today. I'd love to ask a question, but one of the ways I'm going to know whether you're going to participate in this question is at the bottom of your screen, there's a place where it says participants. If you click on that, you're going to see all the participants. And at the bottom, you should have some options of a yes, no, um, a raised hand. So if you want to participate, um, I'd love for you to just uh, put a yes or uh, you know, next to this question or a raised hand. And if we don't see it there, John and uh, Liam are on the call with me or help me look for even just raised hands maybe in the actual video. So if you are a collector, I'd love to hear from you. Do you have a collection? If so, what do you collect and why? So is there anybody that, oh, we have loads. Oh, Bishop Fonzie, I'd love to hear from you. What? is yours so if we can unmute bishop fonzi you can unmute yourself bishop fonzi or we can unmute you you can find him john i think i'm can you hear me i can hear you that's great great and what are you a collector of bishop fonzi oh uh money <laughs> Yes, that's a great, and I don't think I need to even ask why. <laughs> Anything else that you collect? Oh, I reckon books. Oh, books. Oh, what's your, and, and what's your favorite so far? Oh, gosh, that would be very hard. Um, well, Besides I'll tell the you, Bible. I'm, Besides the Bible. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, um, how about um, a book I have read now three times and I just started it for the fourth time and it's called Let the Fire Fall by Father Mike Scanlon. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll Very have to look that up. Yeah, it's all about we'll... the Holy Spirit in his okay. life. Okay, maybe we'll put that up in the chat as people as a recommendation. Um, that yeah. would be fabulous. Thank you, Bishop Fonzie. So uh, one of the things with Alpha is that even though it's being run online, our values don't go away. So we are going to um, talk just for very briefly. I'd love to find out if you can, uh, if you've already clicked a yes for that last question, go ahead and click it again so it'll go away. And then I'll see fresh. So take away your yeses so that I'm gonna ask you another question now. There you go. And this question is just around, um, if you have run alpha before or you're familiar with running alpha or have been on an alpha in any way, go ahead and give me a yes or a no. I'd love to just see um, you have an option in your participants. So those that may have just joined us in your participants window down below, if you open that up at the bottom, you have yes, no. You can even tell me to go slower, go faster. And if you click on the three dots, it even tells me uh, whether you're thumbs up or thumbs down. You can even give me an applause if you think I'm doing a good job, or you can go and tell me I need a break because this is too much information. So uh, we have a hand raise. That's very good. We have several. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, David. I'll take that applause. Um, okay, so we have several here who have run alpha before and one that hasn't is there any others there's some that haven't responded at all so i'll let them respond so what we're going to do i love the hand the raised hands we're going to come to questions we are going to stop all throughout the 
the webinar to ask for questions, but we're going to leave a huge chunk at the very end for questions um, because I might answer it as I go. But one of the big things that um, we want to remember with the alpha is that you want to make sure that hospitality, the talk and the discussion are your core values of everything that you do. You want to make sure those are a part of your alpha online as well. And we're going to talk about how you can do that. I mentioned how at the beginning that when John sent you uh, the Zoom link, he would have asked you to prepare your favorite snack um, and have your cuppa. That's all part of the hospitality. You'll want someone on your team welcoming everybody, just like John was doing um, at the beginning of the call. We recommend this be someone different to your presenter like we have. But the hospitality side is super important um, because it helps people feel at ease and welcome. Um, what do we do around the dinner table naturally when we're with people and we're having a meal? Well, we chat and we ask about each other how our day is. So that's why we feel that hospitality part is just so important. It's a little different online than being able to sit across from each other in a meal, of course. So that's why we encourage people to get a snack and have that ready. Um, with your talk, um, you want to, uh, we're going to show you that next week, how to share your video. But this is really great because with Alpha, um, we have the talks already on video for you so you don't have to worry about the theology and you don't have to come up with that yourself so you can trust the content of Alpha and then the discussion is super important because Alpha is an exploration of faith it is a place where people can ask all their questions uh, anything that they want to know it's not a Christian Bible study it is a place for non-Christians to explore faith it's run by Christians, but it's, and it's facilitated by the church, but it is a safe space for non-Christians to ask all of their questions about God um, and about Jesus, and for us to have an open uh, and safe conversation uh, about faith. So it should be a, an exploration of faith for everyone. So those are our core values. So that's the same if you're running it in person, but online that's going to be exactly the same so that's that's not going to change at all so there's three simple steps um, that you need to remember that are part of running alpha online if liam wants to go to the next slide three simple steps um, there's schedule uh, you're going to invite and you're going to host. So it's, it's, it's a little different here. This is where we, when you're online, it's just a little different. But if you can remember this, it's really accessible. If you've started using Zoom uh, to talk to your friends, you know a little bit already about how to use Zoom. So that's that scheduling. You just need to schedule a Zoom meeting for Alpha Online. And then that invite part is that you can invite your guests, all right, and then the host, and then you're going to host the Zoom meeting for Alpha Online. So three simple steps for running Alpha Online, just those three things. And we're going to drill down into the details of all of that, but really simple, schedule, invite, host. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to prepare, how to get ready for that Zoom. Um, and some of these are exactly just like you would be preparing for your own alpha. So how you want to prepare is to pray. This is super important. We all um, just need to take time before the Lord and just ask for his Holy Spirit to guide us. And, and in a time like this, and the power of God is not bound by social distancing or digital interfaces. Um, you can begin to pray for your community, pray for your um, church leaders, pray for the government, um, and bring people alongside to begin to pray with you. And as you begin to pray about um, stepping into this alpha, the very first thing you want to do is pick when you want to do it and register it online. So that's where you go to my alpha. So after you've prayed and you're going to keep praying throughout and you want to get others praying for you throughout the whole process of running alpha but you need to go the very first thing you do then after praying is go to my alpha and that's on our website there's actually a button that you can click that says my alpha and that's where you register everything is there on uh, the my alpha all the videos are there for you to download um, there's training videos for you to send out to your team there is everything that you could possibly need. All the questions that you can cut and paste uh, into a document, which, which I'll talk about in a minute. 
but everything that you could possibly need to run your alpha should be right there in my alpha also on our webpage are other resources to help you with it online and that's in the online or how your church can thrive so there's lots of resources on there that but that's the very first thing you want to do when you're preparing to run your alpha so then you want to build your team. So you, we've kind of come across just even on this call in preparation for it, that there are three roles in running it online that have been super helpful for us. And we've come up with the idea of having a, um, a presenter, a host, and a tech. So this is really important. I'm the presenter and John, you met at the beginning of the call. He was the one that sent out the invites. He sent the Zoom link out. He invited everybody into the room. So he was handling all of that from his computer so that the presenter doesn't have to worry about that piece at all. So, and then we have someone in the background named Liam and he's there handling um, all the text. So all the slides, all the sound that you heard, the music, uh, the video, that's all handled by another person. So you don't have to, you could have actually two, your host could double up as your tech person. Um, but it would be good to at least have two people on the call. If you're able to get three, um, even better. And then of course, you'll want those hosts and helpers to help out with the discussion groups and the breakout rooms. One of the things we've learned about running Alpha Online is you really wanna keep those small groups even smaller than you would if you were doing them in person. So that 10 to 12 size of a small group is really too large online you love it's, it's better to keep it at eight to ten maximum so depending on how many people have registered your alpha that's how many people you need on the call with you leading those small groups so that would be the rest of your team and that team is able to go online at your my alpha you're allowed to invite all of your team into that my alpha so that they can see everything you see um, and they're able to get all the uh, information that you need as well um, around getting the videos. They can download them as well. They can get access to the questions, um, which, which I mentioned a minute ago. Um, you'll want to download the video when you're going into My Alpha, you and your team, because uh, it comes across and streams better. I mean, you can get them technically um, and just stream it, but we found the best thing to do to share that video is um, you wanna check your connectivity Plugging into the internet is better than using your Wi-Fi when you're actually running that Zoom call, but you'll want to download the video before you share it so that it's actually on your hard drive. You don't have to download all of them so that it slows your hard drive down. You could just download one a week and then delete it or trash it and come back to it. It's up to yourself, but you at least you do want to download that talk. That's super important. And then with those questions, ask your team to do this as well. Um, copy and paste those questions. Um, you could put them like in a Google Doc or in a um, Microsoft Word Doc or a Pages Doc, whichever you use, Microsoft or, or Mac. And if you copy and paste the small group questions, you're able to just copy and paste them into the chat function. So you'll have them right there and they're just ready and accessible for you. So you as the leader are able to do that. Um, and then of course you need to create your Zoom account. That's super important. Now, John, who is our host on this call, has created a handy explainer video, and it's on our website, exactly how to create a Zoom account if you don't have one already set up. I know that the free accounts only last 40 minutes, so you need to remember that. But if you uh, need that Zoom call to go longer, and I would recommend not making, so we know that live alpha is typically about two hours, I wouldn't make your Zoom call or your Alpha online more than an hour because people get antsy after that and they, they really have a hard time holding their attention. So it's, it's very difficult. So you're, you're gonna be tightening up your uh, everything. And I, I know a lot of that happens with the meal anyway, since you're not gonna have that piece and they're having a snack candy there. So that's gonna eat up a lot of what you spend that first hour doing anyway. But you can look at exactly how to set up that Zoom and. Um, if you create an account and you actually buy a license, uh, you have unlimited amount of time. It's not very expensive. It's well worth the church investing in that Zoom account um, and setting it up. You could set up one and share it if you need to. Um, and then you'll need to, I would schedule a Zoom call as a practice round with your team first. So we did that before getting on this call with you. And we did a run through, we actually did two run throughs. Um, I wrote out exactly what we wanted to talk about. And, and then we scheduled the Zoom call 
and, and we did it with the team first. So you'll want to do that with your team. So just practice. I think the best part of Zoom is like riding a bicycle. The more you do it, the better you get at it. You just need to keep doing it and, and doing it again and again will help you get familiar with it. It takes away the mystery and it doesn't feel so unaccessible. So that's super important. So um, you want to make sure you register uh, make sure you download that video, copy and paste those questions, create that Zoom account. And we have all this in a handy PDF, which I'll talk about at the, um, at the end of this call. But make sure you do all of those steps. It'll really help you. And then finally, you want to reach out. Um, you want to promote your alpha. Um, many of us are thinking through the question of how we can stay connected with our community already. Um, and we're thinking, how in the world can we do be missional in a time like this? Um, this is a great question. And this is why this has become a great way to reach people um, to those who don't know yet God. Um, perhaps more than ever, people are asking questions. Um, perhaps more than ever, they're wondering, why is this happening? Uh, this pandemic, a global pandemic, and they need the hope that is found in Jesus. Um, and this is our opportunity to really offer that safe place for people to come and ask all of those questions. Um, lots of people have questions, they have fears about all that's uh, happening, and you can provide a safe and a loving way for them to connect by offering Alpha where truth can be found in a world that's very confusing and concerning. So I encourage you to reach out um, and I encourage you in that reaching out to send out your Zoom link only to people who register or who email you. So when you promote it, you need to put somebody as email. And so John would have put up his email address for you to register with him or you could have just registered online and we can show you how to set something like that up on your website or you can just send out your email address People will register then, or say they want to join your alpha. Um, I would then only send your Zoom link. Don't make your Zoom link public. Um, make sure you're sending them out to your registered guests. So don't put them up on social media just for anyone to join. You wanna make sure you know who your guests are that are coming on to your alpha. So this is really important. Get the promotion of that alpha out on all social media like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And if you have questions about how to do that, get in touch with our office and we'd love to help you do that. We'd help, love to help you create uh, a campaign or give you access to all the materials. We have a lot of materials on our, on our website and there's stuff in my alpha that you can use to begin to promote your alpha online. So now, Everybody take a, a big stretch if you need to. We're gonna uh, do another icebreaker. I know that was a lot of information all at once. So I'm gonna ask another question. You can pull up your um, participants page again and give me uh, uh, either a hands up or a yes. Um, but I'd love to know what's the craziest belief that you held as a child? So for me, for instance, I really fell into that meme that was um, going around Facebook that said, I really thought quicksand was gonna be a bigger deal than it is when I grew up. I actually believed I watched all those shows when I was a kid where people kept falling into quicksand. And I really thought when I grew up as an adult that I was gonna have trouble falling into quicksand and I better be on the lookout for it. So what I'd love to know from you, what was the craziest belief that you ever had when somebody raised their hand or, oh, Steven from Terman, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't. We're gonna unmute you though. Let me unmute Steven. Do you see his, yes, hopefully he was saying yes to my question. Or you can unmute yourself and tell us, what was the craziest belief, Stephen, that you held as a child? Well, I always believed there was a God, but um, I was, um, I, um, I'd say my biggest uh, belief was um, that money was free to everyone. You know, it was um, easy for everyone. You know, when you were a child, you, you sort of thought, ah, it'd be easy getting money and easy, you know, and God will give me lots of money. So it was my belief was money was, uh, but um, yeah, you, you always thought it was just all there. That's right. My, my, my seven-year-old daughter was just talking about that this morning. She 
we were just talking about, you know, hearing from God this morning. And she was like, I, you know, how do you hear from God? And we were discussing that. And she was saying, okay, God, I want chocolate cake right now. You know, and she started, she just thought that if you just asked for it, it would come. So we just were talking about that. Denise, you have your hand up. Tell us what is the craziest belief that you had as a kid? You're muted. If you can, un I know you unmuted yourself, but then you muted again. There you are. Okay. I believed my mother knew everything, absolutely everything. I'd say to her as a young child, is it going to rain, mom? <laughs> and she said, yes, I just believed it. I went outside the door and I, I thought my mother knew everything. Took me a yeah. long time to realize she didn't know everything. That's, it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I think I think I was similar to you in that for sure. Absolutely. So we're going. Thank you for sharing that, guys. Um, so now we're just going to talk a little bit about how you begin. Um, so how you begin? Well, we talked a little bit about that welcome. I'm just going to uh, remind you. Um, with that welcome is super important because our hospitality piece in Alpha is really, really important. So we don't want to lose that when we're doing it online. So that welcome piece is really important to have someone like John as your host um, on your team. So you need that host role filled so that they can welcome each person as they come on the call so that they can tell everybody to go ahead and be on mute. Um, and to stay on mute and to talk about the different Zoom etiquette. That host can point out all the different features, uh, at, like in participants or in the chat function. And then I would encourage everybody to chat lots. I mean, on your call, it's great if people can get on that chat function and just be chatting away. There's, n there's no problem with it. I would encourage people because what would happen on your alpha when you're in person is people are going to be chatting and that's what helps the atmosphere feel like it's family and it feels cozy so that food and and having that snack ready to go um, but also encouraging people to chat and and talk to each other would be great there's a private chat you can have with people and then there's the public chat so that's both available to you there so encourage people to chat lots and then you want to demonstrate so what do i mean by this when you, John and myself throughout this phone call have been demonstrating to you and you want to do that for your alpha participants because even while people might be using Zoom with their family members, they might be familiar how to use it on an alpha and know, um, you know, all the different things that you can use. So on the Zoom call, you'll want to go ahead and show them at the beginning um, where the different functionality is and you want to make it as accessible as possible. So open that Zoom using your meeting invite, begin the call, make sure you're early, that's really important. Wait for the participants to join and then engage them in friendly conversation when, as the guests join the call. Once everybody's on, explain the importance of muting. You can mute all um, at the bottom of your screen as the host, you'll have the option to mute everybody. Um, and then show people you know, that you can open manage participants and chat to get your window set up so that's super important and that's how you would begin so next um i'm just going to highlight a couple of things there is uh, a website if you haven't already been on it if liam can show us that next slide it is our alpha ireland website and on um the alpha ireland website it is going to give you the option of everything you need to know that I've just shared with you. So there's a PDF document uh, on our online, alpha online part of our website. And everything that I've just shared with you is in that handy PDF document with a lot more information. And that my alpha button that's highlighted here on this slide is also on the home page of our uh, website. Don't forget that that's the very first thing that you do is that you get on and you register that alpha. Utilize the resources there. We're putting up new resources all, all the time. Um, I'm putting up things for youth all the time. There's Zoom games. Here's a table of contents of that handy PDF. Just to give you an idea, of, there's loads of things that I won't be able to cover uh, in an hour at a webinar. That, so there's loads of information in this PDF that you can get on and take a look at. And it has pictures and a step-by-step -step guide that will take you through how to run. And this PDF is all about running Alpha Online. So if there's anything that you forgot from this call, we've also are recording the call so that you can go back and listen to everything that was said. 
um, and then you can read it on the PDF. So we're trying to give you everything that you could possibly need to, to help make your alpha as successful as possible. And of course, the staff are available to you if you have any questions that you can email us. Um, and I just, since I'm, I'm finishing up just a couple of minutes, I wanna mention um, just a couple of tips. Uh, you wanna make sure that your internet connection um, is really good. So I mentioned that earlier in the call. So if, you, if you're able to plug in, um, plug your computer in directly into the internet, but just check your internet connection. You can actually go online and do a speed test at speedtest.net. Maybe we could put that up in the chat, John. Um, so if you go to that website, you can actually check your internet connection. And if there's any trouble with it, you can um, call your internet comp company to get that going faster. You wanna keep it short, shorter than you normally do. People lose interest on a Zoom call after about an hour. Um, so try to keep the whole um, alpha to an hour and email more. In a digital setting, more c communication is needed than usual. So you'll want to be sending out emails and checking in with people. Send weekly emails recapping the talk or ask guests to share their thoughts via the email and include the link for the next session. Just to remind them, even if you're using the same link, you want to resend that link out every week. Um, and then check if someone missed tonight. If someone missed uh, that alpha, go ahead and, and, and check in with them. Um, another top tip, and this is all in the PDF if you forget any of these again, um, try to uh, avoid technical distractions or even uh, child distractions. I have seven people living in this house with me and um, half of them are, uh, more than half of them are under the age of seven and can be quite loud. So like I have one of them that's a screamer. She, he's 10 months old. And so I just ask that he kindly be put somewhere in a farther part of the house while I'm managing this call. So you want to go ahead and manage those kinds of things ahead of time. Um, so that's really important, but just check for any distractions. Do that practice call. And then something that we all forget is maybe look behind you, <laughs> see what you're sharing behind you, be, be aware of that before you get on your call. So all of these tips and uh, tricks are in this PDF guide. Um, and I think we have loads of time now as I've flown through, as I usually do. Um, if there are any questions, we're gonna take questions. So maybe John, if you could help me, um, I'm just gonna close this participants window so I can see the chat window. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, so now would be a good time if anybody has uh, particular questions, please do feel free to put them into the group chat or you can put your hand up or whatever and we'll come to you. I just wanted to, um, I had a, one of the, the, the private uh, messages that came through there and one of the other questions that was asked. Uh, the first question that was asked was from Elaine about my alpha and whether there was a cost associated with anything. So everything on my alpha is free, 100% um, free and not in that sense where you're gonna have to give up um, half your life or something else down the line, but it's genuinely a free resource. So everyone is welcome to go and use that. So that's the, the my alpha one, all the videos in there are free. Um, so it's a good way just of um, going in and logging in and being able to see all the videos. The second one was um, from someone who was saying that they had started an alpha just before um, COVID-19 stuck. So maybe Amanda, you can speak into this. Um, you know, just before the, the whole pandemic struck, um, they were running an alpha and then they stopped because everything was happening. The question is, should they continue um, you know, with the alpha, even though there might've been a couple of weeks or should they just start again? So what would you suggest in that instance? So it's probably been about, would you say it's this person, it's probably been a month since they've been um, doing their alpha with them. Um, I would do, I would, I don't know that I would start all the way to the beginning of the alpha. You could, I don't think there's a wrong answer here, just to clarify, um, because this is brand new to all of us. Um, I would go ahead and connect with those people that you had who were interested in that alpha and, and ask maybe them, would you like to start from the beginning? Maybe poll them and, and, and see if they'd like to start back from the beginning. But you probably could just start where you left off. People probably remember where they were. Um, you could maybe do the very last talk that you did um, if you were pretty far into it and then just keep going. Um, but if you felt like people would really appreciate going ahead and starting from the beginning, then you could poll your participants and just ask them what did they think. Um, meet with your, your church team, um, the team that's going to be running the alpha, see what they think. Um, 
you know, what's, what's an interesting time with this that's happening is it, typically we don't encourage people to run alpha in the summertime, but this year we are because people are home. People are going to be home. Um, the reason we don't typically run alpha in the summer is because people's schedules are so sporadic because of holidays and going away. But this, this would be a time, May, June, July, you can run an alpha um, because people are home and they are looking for something different than Netflix. Um, they're looking for um, maybe all the questions that they start having about this. You, you, and, and the biggest thing with your community um, and something that I've been conscious of since all of this hit is um, I'm first asking people, you know, how are you? And is there something I can pray for you about? That's a great starting place with your community. Just reaching out to them and just asking your community, how can we pray for you? I think is, is, is the right place to start. And just asking them, um, are you okay? Are you coping? You might already be doing that as a, as a parish or as a church, um, just connecting in. But even just a phone call, um, just checking in with your parishioners and saying, how are you coping? Is there anything that you need? Is there anything we can pray for you about? And then, and then build from there, because this is a, a very stressful time for a lot of people. But I do think people are looking and are interested to do something like Alpha Online right now. Um, and I do think you should go ahead and continue the one that was already started. Whether you start all the way back from the beginning or you keep keep going, it's really up to yourself. I don't think there's a wrong answer there. Is that, I hope that helps. Is there any more questions, John? Uh, very good. I think, Denise, do you have your hand up there? Would you like to ask a question? I'm just, I'm just thinking about people, Amanda, um, on our Alpha course. Many of them just have ordinary phones. They don't have a smartphone and some of them don't even have an email. Yeah. So that is a problem. You know, uh, can, yeah. can you link into Zoom using a phone that is not a smartphone? I don't think so. No. Um, can you, John? I said, no, John's correcting me here. Go yes, it, you actually can. So one of the things that we sorry. are able to do, that's all right. And uh, one of the things that we are able to do, and you would have seen in the email that would have been sent out, is that when you're starting up, um, and scheduling a Zoom call, you can have it so that it's both capable for telephone and online yeah, communication. Yeah. So it is possible for someone to call in and they obviously wouldn't be able to see everything that's going on, but they would be able to listen and kind of ask a question or whatever. So uh, if you had seen the email that was uh, sent out, hopefully um, you might've gotten one from this. As part of that, there is the Zoom link itself along with yeah. the meeting ID and the password. And then um, after that, there was, if you'd like to join by telephone, there is a bunch of um, numbers. Now, automatically when you set it up, um, because this is um, a US system, um, it, it kind of gives American phone numbers, but you can choose Ireland uh, in the drop down menu. Now, again, um, I'm pretty sure on one of the um, the Zoom videos that we've done on the website, that's, that's there. But please do feel free to kind of give us a call. I'd be happy to talk to someone offline on this to kind of walk you through it. And you can select Ireland and there's a whole bunch of uh, phone numbers so they can call for um, a local rate. And, um, and then obviously what you can do is you would have to enter manually, kind of, you know, enter the meeting ID and the password, and then they will be able to join a call as well. Okay. So it is possible. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks, John, Amanda. No problem. Yep. Um, I think we have Jane Courtney then there. I'm just going to unmute you now, Jane. Yeah, I, I'm unmuted, yeah. Two things, actually. Um, the first one, similar to the previous question, which was we were just about a week away from doing our Holy Spirit weekend okay. um, when everything got shut down. Okay. Uh, so we've had to put that on hold. Now, I've been in touch with most of the group. Um, some people just aren't responding to emails. So I was thinking next week when the bank holiday weekend is over, I might phone them. But I did ask if people would be interested in, in continuing online. So we, because we had gotten to a, a great part of it and, and I didn't want to, to lose momentum. Um, but probably because we have a, a few older people in our group, they really would rather wait until we're all back together face to face. Um, I would be interested in seeing how Holy Spirit Weekend would work remotely because that, that's the only, that would be my only concern is the, yeah. the remoteness of the, the Holy Spirit weekend. Um, so I'm kind of getting 50-50 back with people. Some want to do it online. Some people want to wait. So I'm stuck in the middle with that. Well, the great thing about Alpha is um, you can run it more than once in the year. 
And so yeah. you, you could go ahead and continue with those who wanted to continue online and then yeah. still invite those online guests when you can do it in person to do it in person. Unfortunately, yeah. I think we're going to be in this position for a long time. Um, yeah. And I, 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 it's, it's a long time to not be connecting with your community. And I, I, I think that, that, and that's one of the reasons we um, really felt to go ahead and you know what, um, the longer this is stretching out, we really need to try to help serve the church in this way and help make everything we're doing as accessible as possible. Um, I, I would encourage you to do both, but that's really your call and your team's call as well as to what you want to do. I, I would go ahead and go on and continue with the Alpha really support the ones who want to do it in person to go ahead and join by phone if they don't have the internet capabilities to listen in if they want to and let them know that we'll try our best to grab everybody again. Um, you could also run just your Holy Spirit Day again for that group of people later in the year um, as a regathering. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and try as a one-off, try to gather everybody I know that sounds really different, but we're really innovating right now, aren't we? We're really trying to um, yeah. figure out. Yeah, I mean, we're all in this uh, place where we have to, we're forced to really think outside the box. And, and that is one of the things with the Alpha. You could say to those members who really just want to wait and postpone to say, you know, I think it's a, a great idea. I think it will be good to meet in person. But right now we're going to just, we are going to keep going. Or... Another thing is you could start over with another alpha and invite those that wanted to keep going and start a brand new alpha um, yeah. from the beginning and just let those who had wanted to continue to start a brand new alpha online. Yeah. And let it be an online I suppose, experience. I suppose one of the things that I would just say about that is my, my concern would be that the first thing that you start with Jane being the Holy Spirit one might be a bit of a, an yeah. odd one to go with. Oh no. So, no, no yeah. No. So I do, I do think that if you are going to do an yeah. online one, maybe going back a few would be ideal. And I, th I would agree there with Amanda that maybe the best thing to do would maybe to start again and, and um, invite a few people along with that. Um, and those who, who had shown an interest in continuing to do it. Yeah. I think that if your uh, next group is to be the uh, Holy Spirit um, day, and that was your first one that would be online, that might be a bit uh, disconcerting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be so. hard. It's a lot to it's a lot to bite off. <laughs> freak the new people out completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 After the Holy Spirit uh, weekend. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. So that might be the the best way of kind of uh, of of moving forward. Um, okay. With that. Yeah. Okay. Well, one other question, and and yeah. this is where, um, I would love to put word out there to start an online one, but this is where, and it, it's it's this whole isolation has shown the huge holes that we have in our parish. Because we have no online presence really at all. There is a website, it's updated maybe twice a year. The person mm -hmm. who's in charge of the administration is difficult to get in touch with. So there's there's no great way to actually get the word out there and um, that we're doing it. Now I can put posters and windows of the parish centre, which is next door to the supermarket, which of course is the busiest place. Um, and I've already set up a Facebook page for Alpha in Dawkey. Right. So I'm just wondering, is, is there any other recommendations of how to get the word out there? Yeah, I might let John go because John and I have been discussing this a bit and how we can support churches. But John, why don't you go ahead with some of your ideas? Yeah, I think there's there's a few different ways of kind of doing that. And obviously, um, because it, as you say, the, the kind of traditional posters and that kind of stuff maybe aren't uh, uh, the best way necessarily of, of going around this time. One thing that I've noticed is like, uh, I realized my dad is now in all these WhatsApp groups that he's never been in before. Like my dad is one of these lads who was just, you, you'd be trying to phone him for 62 days and his phone would be off the whole time. But now he's like on the WhatsApp group from, for like the, the, um, the, the road that he lives on. People who he's never really spoken to before. He's kind of in this and he's sending on stupid videos all the time. But essentially what you're finding is that people are kind of becoming um, connected in new ways. And these WhatsApp groups are maybe a good way of inviting people around. There's also kind of community groups, um, you know, that, that might be on Facebook groups or different things like that. And, um, you know, for, for a local area, like um, Dokey might have a, a group like that. It is really trying to kind of innovate. And the sense of personal invitation really is important. And the personal invitation is something that will very much reach further than than even normal i think 
uh, in this time, you know, so it's a, it's a chance of kind of reaching out to people and saying, look, um, so if you have a, a group of people who tried alpha just beforehand um, and you're going to start a new one to really encourage them to invite two or three people along because the, the normal reasons for people to say no aren't necessarily there anymore. You know, it's, it's not like people are saying, oh, well, I've got football on this tonight or whatever it is. There's literally nothing else going on. So, so I think that sense of a personal invite, if you can try and encourage people um, to invite three people along to something, you will get that sense. And, and using your own kind of networks and dynamics that are in there, um, I do think that there's, there's something quite um, important to that. Um, so yeah, th we are still trying to find out ways of doing that. We're, we also have kind of, um, you know, we, we have uh, PDFs and flyers and posters and that kind of stuff that we would be able to uh, give to people. Um, and we're happy to support you in any way if, if there's kind of promotion material that you would need and we can, we can work with you on that. Um, and that perhaps could be emailed out to people if you have a group of, you know, if, if the parish has, um, you know, uh, an online kind of, um, you know, uh, whether they send out the newsletter or anything like that, you know, a way of kind of keeping in contact with people, you can encourage people to come from yep. there as well. Thank you. Of, yeah, thank you. A couple of um, getting creative ideas that's again in the PDF um, is that you could suggest that every guest bring their favorite book to show and talk about for one minute. It's just, gets, it's just ways of getting to know your guests um, and getting to know the people that are on your call. Uh, you could offer a delivery gift voucher as a prize to one of your guests uh, each week uh, so that they could have something delivered. Um, these are just some ways to get creative on these Zoom calls um, that some other countries are already doing. I, I got a lot of these ideas and some of these, uh, so I've been meeting with countries like even Wuhan and China has been running Alpha and finding it's really helping the mental health um, because people have really had like uh, almost like a PTSD effect of post-traumatic stress reaction to what's gone on and what's happened. And they said that Alpha has been a real salve, a real balm, a real healing for the community. So that's been very interesting to hear um, and, and really good to hear. So we've been listening to like Hong Kong and the different countries, um, Australia, and some of them are already running Alpha online. There's an Alpha online in, I'll just mention this, in um, HTB in London are running uh, the marriage course. If you haven't heard, they, there's a new marriage course, a new set of videos that Alpha have um, put together. We've had the marriage course a long time, but they've just finished a whole new set of videos. John's going to show people how to run that online on Friday if you want to come along to that webinar. Um, but the HTB normally only get about 80 to 100 couples signed up, and they have over 1,500 couples signed up for their marriage course online. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So people are really looking to connect online right now. Any other questions people are thinking? Denise. Very simple question, John. I've been putting a little note there on the chat line, but I don't think it's going out into a chat line. How do you send that chat to everyone? Okay, so when you when you click onto that chat, that's a very yeah. good question. So then at the bottom, you click on chat. Yeah. And um, when you do that, uh, it's now just gone for me. I have written, um, yeah. So when it says two, yeah. and uh, hopefully that will, you can click to make sure that it says everyone in meeting. Yes, I have that, yeah. And just then below it is the white bit. So if you just type something into there and then press enter. Now, where do you press enter? Where do you... Just enter on your um, keyboard. Oh, on my on computer. Keyboard. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Okay. Has it gone? Not yet. I haven't seen anything just yet. There it is. There you go. Oh, I did now it. I know. Now I know. Thanks. Hey. There you go. No problem. Great. That's um, great. I think we had Tom Robinson as well. Just bear with me one second, Tom. I'm going to find you there and I will unmute you. I think I'm on mute. Right. Oh, you're right. There you go. Lovely. Yeah. I just want to say uh, you, you were saying you have to register on my alpha first i'd love to practice a bit of this without registering it can i do all that yeah so essentially what what registering on my alpha does it just allows you personally to see all the videos and all the stuff that's in there uh, that does not mean that you have to publish it on our website publishing it on our website means that it goes live and people can see it and search for it and see when there's an online alpha on 
If you choose not to publish it, and again, there's a video there that's very boring and you can watch it for 10 minutes that tells you how to do it. Um, but that will tell you that it's just a simple button that says publish this online or not publish this online. So if you don't press the button, it won't be published on our website. So no one will be any the wiser that um, this is being run and you'll have the opportunity to just look through everything and to do it yourself. Great. And uh, John, can I ask you, how do you get uh, the slides? Are the slides on a different um, uh, computer altogether? How do you get slides up? You know, I'm watching now my laptop and we're down on the side and the slide is on the left. Yeah, so this is Liam uh, who's sharing the slides. Uh, so Liam, who is our silent partner in the background, um, basically, as Amanda said at the start, what we've done is we've broken it down to three people, the host, who's myself, there's Amanda who's doing the presenting, and then Liam, who's on in the background. And then Liam, uh, as you can see down the bottom, there's something called share screen. I just encourage that you don't uh, press it just now. But if you press share screen, you're able to share your own screen and everybody will see what is on that. And so Liam is essentially doing that. He's in his PowerPoint and he's got the slides up and running there. And so that's what everybody is seeing. Yeah. You can prevent, Tom, other people on the call from sharing their screen. So there's lots of settings that you can do while on the call or before the call. So you, before you even get on the call, you can actually choose an option to have everybody muted before they come, as they come on. You can have everybody, they can't um, share their screen or you can allow for anyone to share their screen. Um, and then we didn't mention the view options, John. Um, do you want to talk about that at the top? That was really helpful when we were doing our run through. Yeah, so um, just again at the top there, the view options is as you're going. So at the very top of the screen, you'll see uh, if you move your cursor up to the top, you'll see you are viewing Lee Mullingar's screen and there's a view options um, one down there. It'll give you the zoom ratio as to how big you'd like it to be. If you press annotate, you can start drawing all over Liam's one, um, which is, uh, I'd strongly suggest you don't. Um, and then what you'll be able to do is uh, see side by side, or you can just, <laughs> I just wreck it all. Um, and uh, now you can, uh, you'll be able to kind of choose how you view things. So it's the different views. There's also the gallery view or the speaker view. Um, a good way of doing it if there's one speaker is um, just below those view options. If you move your cursor um, to whether it's either full screen and just beside that is speaker view. So speaker view will just be the one person uh, whoever's speaking at that moment. Gallery view is the list of people who are there and they'll be able to kind of show up in, in different ways. Um, okay, so there's just a few more questions that are coming through here, if that's okay. So I'm just going to get on to them because we've only got um, a few minutes left here. Um, so do you need a Zoom license to host? If you are looking to host um, a Zoom that is under 40 for zero minutes, then you don't, don't need uh, to pay for a license, you can use a free account. But if you want to um, have anything longer than 40 minutes, you would need to sign up and to work on there. Um, uh, Susan is just asking how small groups work. Um, we're going to be looking at that exactly uh, next week in, in a lot more detail. But in Zoom, there is a possibility of using breakout rooms. Um, and that's something that we're going to be looking at in detail next week. And so you break people into the small groups and um, Amanda will talk you through exactly. You can actually break them up ahead of time. So if you know who your guests are, you can actually pick the, the people who are in that small group with that leader beforehand, or you can let it just happen randomly. The only problem with it happening randomly is you might not know who's in that small group. And the, the great thing about Alpha is continuity of relationship. So you want to know that that's, you won't be able to just get that randomly the next week that you're running alpha. So you'll, you'll, you'll want to know who's in each small group and you can actually choose that before. You can do it right there. I would find that stressful if I literally did it on the call. I'd want a little bit of time ahead of time to figure that piece out, but you can do all of that in advance. It's, it's actually quite easy to do and, and quite fun. Um, very good. So we have someone asking how they can join the marriage course on Friday. I'll send out a link to you, um, Seamus, and you'll be able to see that. So it'll be a separate Zoom link and there will be the same one with all the information um, that's on that. And does the course need to be re-registered as online? Well, essentially, if you do re-register it as an online one, what that does, it allows you to share the videos um, digitally. If it's not an online one, you don't have the capability of sharing the videos digitally. Uh, again, we'll look at this in more kind of detail um, next week, just about sharing the videos and how that's done. But the alpha online bit on my alpha allows people to be able to um, 
to to share the video so that people can kind of watch it or or, or do it that way so so that would be the only positive as to re-registering it as online you um might just be able to kind of do that so basically if you already had alpha builder which you would if it's already registered all the details stay the same all your alphas would already be in there as, as far as there's on so it's it's migrated you wouldn't have to start again um on that so you might just be able to click it's an online alpha as far as we go and if there's any issues we'll go from there um, we are two minutes away for um, the screen uh, options. You can answer that, John. The screen options don't show on my tablet. Okay. Uh, yeah, I need to just have uh, a look into that exactly um, to see what it is because obviously, it, I suppose it depends on the different type of tablets that are out there, whether it's an iPad or uh, an Android one. Um, but what we'll try and do is to do a little bit more digging on that for next week, uh, Jerry, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a sense of that um, in the interim. If you need to know uh, earlier about those things, maybe you can just send uh, an email. Mine is john at alphaireland.org and I'd be happy to kind of talk to you offline about that. And we're happy to support everyone around all of these questions. If you have, I think that's the big thing that we want to highlight again is the screen with our, um, you know, our, our, e our web address. All of our emails are on there. I can type mine in here for you. It's literally just Amanda at alphaireland.org and get in touch with us. Um, John is John at alphaireland.org and ask us anything. Um, and we're happy to help with those questions around uh, getting things up online um, with promoting your alpha. Um, any, anything you need to su support wise. I know there's a lot of information that we've tried to cover in an hour and I'm sure even as we're doing things, more questions, even as you process it will come up. Don't hesitate to email us or call us and we'll do our best to walk you through it and help you. That's really the end of our um, webinar. We really, really appreciate everyone coming on the call. We're praying for you as an alpha team. We're praying for your alphas. Um, we're praying for you as a church, just not only um, corporately, but individually, that you have the peace of God will reside in your hearts during this time and in your minds and for your families. This is a really critical time for families um, because while there might be a lot of families who are getting the benefit of being together, I think this can be a quite stressful time for families who don't get along, who are being forced to be together. Um, so that's really been something on my heart as well. Um, to just really love uh, on these families and reach out to these families and check in with them to see how everybody's coping and how everybody's doing. Please mind yourself. Um, go away. Get yourself a cuppa now and process everything. And um, please join us next Monday <clears throat> while we talk more about sharing your video and doing those breakout rooms for small groups. And then on Friday of this week, we have the marriage course webinar. All you got to do is register online. On Wednesday of this week, so every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, there's a webinar covering a different uh, session. So this Wednesday is Alpha Youth, and we'll be covering similar um, aspects to what we covered today, how to prepare, how to begin in the hospitality. We'll be covering more about how to do games, and we'll be doing games online on Zoom. So join us for that, or send somebody in your parish that wants to start reaching out to the young people, if they're already reaching out to young people. And then on Friday, again, the marriage course, brand new, um, newly imagined um, marriage course, fabulous content. Really encourage you to get on there. Sometimes that can be a great starting place if you've never run Alpha. People will typically go and look to start a marriage course at least. So do check that out. Do get in touch with us. We really appreciate you all and hope that you have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of this sunshine. Uh, get in touch with us if you have any more questions. All right, talk to you soon. Thanks guys.